Hi, welcome to Matters of the Heart and Soul. I'm your host, Janie Charlo. Matters of the Heart and Soul is a podcast to raise awareness and awaken humanity to all that is within. We want to be a beacon of light on your life journey. Hey guys, I'm back again. This is Janie Charlo, and we just wanted to take a little time to give some props to our sponsorships. We just want to thank Anchor for being our sponsor here to get our podcast going. So we want you all as our listeners to maybe shed some light and into your own perspective and in your own journey of life and maybe start your own podcast just as Anchor gave Matters of the Heart and Soul a life and it came to life through Anchor. So consider Anchor for your podcasting. Hi, welcome to Matters of the Heart and Soul podcast. I'm your host, Janie Charlo. And on today's show, we actually have Mr. Russell Bruce back on the show. Um, He was actually on one of the episodes entitled Spiritual Awakening with Russell Bruce, and we've gotten so much feedback. And so we have him back today, and we are going to be expounding on love versus fear. So welcome back, Russell. Thanks for having me back. All right. So we know that love is considered the highest vibration in the universe, and we know that fear is the exact opposite of that. So I guess we could say it's one of the lower vibrations. So let's jump right into it, Russell. Explain love versus fear to us. I think in this society, I think as far as love is concerned, I think if you you talk to a hundred people, you probably get close to a hundred different accounts as to what it actually is. And over a period of time, it tends to change. But I think at a high level, most people would probably agree that God is love. But then the question is, what do they really think God is? Like, is it a man Mm -hmm. up in a cloud with his hand reaching down through a cloud? Mm -hmm. Is it a spirit? So let's, let's, stop right there so if we're gonna say that love is the highest vibration and you just said that you know some people would consider love as God um, or spirit or whatever um, kind of give us some examples of why everyone is in, in quest of love but it seems to elude everyone once again, I think it's because I don't think that people have really taken the time to really delve deeper into it, to really try to get a true understanding. I think most people go by whatever the societal norms are. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times we think love is like the butterflies that you feel when you meet someone, you know, you're the object of your affection mm-hmm. and that that's love and a lot of times that's more just infatuation right mm-hmm. I think people may grow into love because it's more of a knowledge <clears throat> in a level <clears throat> excuse me in a in a level of spirituality like the whole thing about spiritual awakening is finding your connection to the oneness right so I, and what I, is the oneness? So, like for example, I, I think I made the comment before the the African proverb: "When I was in search for myself, I found God, and when I was searching for God, I found myself." The whole, you know, we're just like the the drop of water in the ocean. Like mm-hmm. we're not separate from the ocean. You know, we've come from the ocean. Whether you pull me out and put me in a teacup or you splash or whatever, it's is still part of the the greater whole, right? So if I was to break that down, that means, and if we believe in God, and we believe that God is the creator of this of everything that we see, God creates the heavens, the earth, the you know the chairs we're sitting on, the ultimate creator. And if we are creator created from God, you're saying that we are a part of that spirit, right? That we're not separate entities. That you and I are one. Correct. Right? Correct. So say, for example, just to tie up what you just said, you know, the chairs, the table, things of that nature, right? So we come into this physical reality to experience. Like God is spirit and created us as these physical entities Mm -hmm. so that God can have an experience as Janie Charlo or Russell Bruce, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So we get these downloads or these cognitions from spirit 
they give us visions to create a table, to create a chair, to create all these things in the physical reality, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and even on opposite end, through fear, we create things that are Mm -hmm. on the opposite end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once again, saying that I am you and we are we, like this whole interconnectedness, like there's only one of us here, right? You know, even though we're eight billion individuals on the planet, we are all just drops of water in the ocean. So we're all interconnected. So like, say, for example, you go do a good, loving, godly type deed for another human being. You're actually kind of depositing into that person. Right. Mm -hmm. So the universe keeps account. It's like you're depositing into a bank and at some point. It comes back to you you could withdraw that and that's what we call the love because you're living in truth of your creation mm. when we do the opposite then you're building what people refer to as karma which brings back the equal and opposite reaction to whatever it is that you put out into the universe mm-hmm. so going back to the whole love thing is really having a true understanding that there's only one of us here in that why you should love all human beings because we're all interconnected in what you do. Like Jesus in scripture says, what you do for the least of my brother and you do unto me. Cause it's like, we are all interconnected in this experience. Okay. So <clears throat> we're all connected and we're all connected in love through love. Um, and by oneness, the oneness with our creator, our God, the universe, whatever you want to call it. So how do we get to love? Because we're having so many things that we're seeing, right? We're seeing suicide. We're seeing so many racial issues going on right now. Um, We're seeing a lot of political strife. So how do we get to this highest vibration? So I think when, when we see these things like racism and murder and all these different things out here that are happening in society, a lot of times it's coming from people feel disconnected. Like they, from? Don't, they don't realize they're And I keep using the drop of water in the ocean because just trying to paint a picture. Um, a lot of times they feel that they're disconnected. You know, even though they're out from of the source, from the are source, are disconnected from their what? Their they families. Fear or... They're disconnected okay. from source, mm-hmm. and in each other, right? So, for example, there's there's another scripture that says, "How can you love me who you haven't seen and hate hate your brother who you see every day?" Mm-hmm. So it's like it's almost like an oxymoron. You have these people who, t- so who talk true. love, but they live the complete opposite because mm-hmm. it's like you can't love God and enslave people and murder people and do all these other things. You know what I'm saying? Without repenting or mm-hmm. an attempt to evolve into a higher understanding. So what happens when people feel separated from source, they're separated from love. Mm -hmm. And that's where the fear comes in. So if you look at racism, racism is fear. Yep. You know, we live in a society that's dominated by white supremacy, for example, which to me is the root of most racism in the society in which we live here in America, right? And that's just a fear of genetically being annihilated by the darker people's within that society so it breeds all these social political financial dogmas that are acted out so that's a separation whereas if we seen ourselves connected and you know we we don't care about merging and morphing into this amalgamated human being like it does not matter because the physical is just the physical ultimately as we evolve cultural barriers, uh, nationalities, all these things dissipate. Yeah. And you, you realize that you're not a physical being, that you're a spiritual being just having a temporary physical existence. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so if we, we talk about love, then we definitely have to talk about fear, right? Um, and, you know, you just kind of mentioned that. 
um, a lot of racism, political strife, all this stuff is out of fear. Where's the fear coming from? Once, like, a, once again, the fear comes from feeling the disconnection from mm -hmm. source. But I don't think people even internalize it, right? Mm -hmm. They don't internalize it because a lot of people only go by what's been fed to them through media, through music, through movies, things of that nature. The things that control culture within a society. Mm -hmm. So, But you, you actually have think tanks of people who actually control that because they could sway public opinion through media right right so then we would we could say that a lot of fear comes in through the mind suggestion mm -hmm. and that's what in this society we refer to is double like there's opposing factors to everything like there's light and darkness up down mm -hmm. left right love fear mm -hmm. so it's like on a daily basis that's why it's so important like positive negative so it's like Every day I wake up, I try to listen to positive affirmations and, you know, and it's like... And yeah, I think each day we're going to have either love or fear pulling on us. And what you let sink in will kind of sway you more to either the love side of the spectrum or to the fear side of the spectrum. So if you are every day listening to, you know, the media, the news, certain music you're going to be very fear-based. And I'm going to even say myself, I used to love to watch like Dateline 48 hours. And then I stopped like just as a fast. And I noticed that some of that stuff, I was always looking over my shoulder if I was somewhere because some of the stuff I seen in the episodes was sinking in and I was like wow and I didn't even realize it because I used to love just to sit on the couch and like watch episodes of 48 hours crime shows and I'm like wow and so I don't even I don't do it no more it's been like almost a year and a half right and, and the, <laughs> it's crazy in those same news broadcasts no no offense against 48 <laughs> hours or you know any of that because <laughs> Dateline I like it but it it I will speak for me, it planted fear and I noticed it. I really noticed it. And I was like, oh no. Have you ever noticed that during the commercials, most of them were turning around selling you drugs for fear and anxiety? Well, definitely. So it, it was almost like the setup, right? So they are in a situation where they have to get a return on the dollar for their shareholders. So. Mm -hmm. It's like they're going for straight shock value. Mm -hmm. So spiritual enlightenment and upliftment or whatever is not fashionable in this society. Not well, yet. It, well, I'm not gonna say it's not fashionable. <laughs> it does not have the shock value. I think we're we're yours. we're we're in a new age. I think we're getting there. It's changing. It's, yeah, there's definitely. But we're not quite there of yet. Of course right? not. But we're in a there's a shift. Right. And I think everyone is is seeing it and feeling it. And I think um, it's going to be a whole lot more technology going on. And people really going to have to decide what part of the spectrum they're going to be on. Because we're going to see a whole lot of things going on where you're going to have to choose love or fear. Because we're, you're going to have to. We're in the day of judgment where love, love conquers evil. And love, love conquers fear, or good conquers evil, and love conquers fear. So we're there, and and that's the enactment of the Osirian drama from ancient Egypt. But uh, I think we just have to get to that point where we're at critical mass, where we have a certain number of human beings on the planet that shift the spectrum the other way. But I think it's coming. All right. So let's let's talk about so we're still love and fear and we do realize that these are the biggest two vibrations. And every decision you make every single day of your life, you're making that decision out of love or you're making it out of fear, right? True. So then we could say that each day of our life we are in a battle. We're either going to be pulled towards love or we're going to be pulled towards fear. Sometimes we'll make the mark, sometimes we'll miss it. That's okay. That's life, right? So let me ask you, <clears throat> I would say it's a war. So could we say it's a spiritual warfare? Very much so. All right. So let's talk about that. And because I believe spiritual warfare is mostly love and fear, 
right? Some people may say good and bad, God versus the devil, whatever. Same thing. Same thing, love versus fear, right? It's all the same thing. Same thing. Where are you gonna what you gonna do when you make this decision? So let's talk about if somebody right now is in this battle, right? Because they can clearly feel it. It's like things aren't going right in their life. They don't understand and they feeling it. They have all this anxiety, the depression, and they can't quite get it. What do you think is the key to winning, to reach love and not allow fear to win? So, because that's we all need to get there right we're all in in the battle to win towards love great question so yeah great question so first thing people need to do is silence their mind so you have Definitely. a lot of people in this society who they fear silence like people go home from work they turn the television radio on they they turn on noise because they can't stand yeah. to hear their own thoughts right and it's fear driven. So maybe they did watch the news this morning and seen where US bombs Iran and they have no idea like what is all this centered around and how how does it tie in politically, socially, spiritually or whatever. And you know, everybody's fear is that there's a third world war coming. So it's like when you're in the darkness and don't know you need light. So light we know is knowledge information, right? So it says my people will be destroyed for the lack of knowledge, knowledge. Mm -hmm. not the not lack of faith because we have we don't nobody believe like we believe but You're it's right. like it's a lack of knowledge so it's like we have to quiet our mind seek knowledge seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave you got to seek the light in darkness mm -hmm. so it's like you have to be that person that walks into a dark room and search for the light switch and turn the light switch on what if you don't know you're in darkness what are some examples of being in darkness and we're talking about spiritual warfare and you're like whoa what's happening but they don't know they're in darkness because if you're if you're disconnected you may not even know you're in darkness and you just I, I think people know that something's wrong because there are enough enlightened people out here, right? We look and we see people, you know, we see people who walk in light. It's almost like they have this magic or mysticism about them, right? Mm -hmm. And I think what happens a lot of times, people have pride to the point where they don't ask questions. Like, they don't want to tell this person that they admire them or whatever. And I think that does everybody a disservice because even so, and that's a fear-based emotion jealousy fear -based, pride right, right envy that's all fear-based right we shouldn't admire people in silence because even that person exactly. that's doing great things that's spiritually enlightened or whatever it's their norm so it's they may not know that they're great and that they have all this to offer the world so it's like What's wrong with going up telling that person that, hey, you know, I think you have great thoughts. I think you're beautiful. I think that, you know, I really like what you did over here with these people, with these children or whatever. It's like that goes a long way because that gets these people to open up more, to help more, things mm -hmm. of that nature. Whereas on the other side, I think some people may not know. So you may be right in that sense because you have... Like, say, for example, African-American people in this society, it's like they have grown accustomed to suffering to where they normalized it. Right. Well, I think is when you when you could clearly recognize those emotions in yourself and that's your disposition, like you're waking up and, you know, you turn on. Well, I don't want to say turn on the TV because we're trying to get away from that. But if you see someone and it's a you know they're doing great things but you're you're just finding fault in that person and you don't even know them you don't know nothing about this person but you're finding fault in them that's jealousy that's fear. and that's fear it's fear it's fear based it's fear based so and that's why you have to check yourself like why am I feeling this way towards this person I don't even know them but that requires you looking in the mirror and saying I need to do something with myself Right. I think what happens is people tend to fear the unknown. So it's like if they don't know something, they tend to fear it, right? And in some cases, they even seek to destroy it because exactly. they don't understand. So once again, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding helps bring 
the light, right? Mm-hmm. So, which helps bring people to love. Mm-hmm. So, knowledge, wisdom, understanding brings people to love. Like, for example, with religion, I think people, whether it's Christianity, Islam, Judaism, or whatever, these are more traditional cultural norms or deifications of culture. So, it's like if you grow up in this culture and this is what your grandparents and your parents did or whatever. You tend to accept it, but yet people say that they have this personal relationship with God. That is not personal. That is cultural. Mm -hmm. Personal is when you go on that lonely quest and you dig deep and you look, look at all the religions, look at, you know, outside of the major three religions, there's hundreds of other religious philosophies and so forth that are out there and spiritual philosophies and, and make a personal decision to find out what resonates with your soul because like let's say for example I'll, I'll give like a metaphoric type example of say downtown is heaven or love downtown Atlanta right mm-hmm. and depending upon where you come from so if your culture your civilization comes from Alpharetta which is north on 400 you got to come south on 400 to get to heaven downtown mm-hmm. if you're coming from out near Six Flags, you got to take 20 west mm-hmm. or 20 east to, to downtown. To so it's like when you see these different religious philosophies, mm-hmm. we can't look at them. You know, it's like the goal is to get to heaven, to get downtown, right? Exactly. So it's like depending upon where your culture is set up, it's it's all speaking freedom, love, peace, all these different things to get there. I think where the problem comes is where we feel separated once again and we look at these things as different. Yeah. We and think so, our way or our culture or our race or our gender is better or so you need to do it our way when that's not it. That's and, there's right. Yeah. And usually it's just a lack of understanding. So mm-hmm. it's like going back to my earlier statement where I used the African proverb where I said I was searching for myself and I found God and when I was searching for God I found myself. So in studying my history, trying to find out who I was as a physical human being, right? I'm a descendant of Africa. So I start studying African history, which takes me back through Egypt. And I could see there clearly where all of these religious philosophies and so forth originated out of the Egyptian mystery spiritual systems, right? Mm -hmm. Thousands of years older than Christianity, Islam, Judaism, all that but all these stories are mirroring exactly what they wrote. Cause and then in, in scripture itself, 80 to 90 percent of the nations that are mentioned are Egypt and Ethiopia in scripture is because these are where the learning centers of the world where people came there to get culture, to get knowledge, wisdom, information on spirituality. Mm-hmm. So it's like, why not go back to the source and, and get that? So in studying that, it, it took me back through Africa. So I understood my roots and where all this spiritual stuff come from and where my spirit came from. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, it then you got to go a step further beyond the physical into the spiritual. Room. It takes you to the angels and back to the creator. Mm-hmm. So back it's a journey. Creator. It's a journey. Mm-hmm. It, so it's like, in in searching, trying to figure out who I was, I found my connection to source, right? Mm-hmm. So do you believe that's what we're all here for? We are all here. The journey back to love? Trying to find our journey back to love, God, self. Source. So when you mm-hmm. find out who you are, yeah, that self actually self-actualizing moment yeah, that you, pretty, you are really connected to God, mm-hmm. that you are... God with the little G, you are a microcosm of the macrocosm. Mm-hmm. That's why we have all this creative ability and we get all these great thoughts and things because it's coming from the creator. But if you live in a society that does not give you the platform to express who you are open and freely without mm-hmm. criticizing and belittling you, and that's what happens. And so a lot of people don't evolve. So you have all these people they tell you you use one tenth of your brain and all this stuff like that. Well, I also believe that's what is holding a lot of people back from evolution too, is because they are in their minds way too much and you have to stay in your heart. 
So if you are a very logical person, which I know most men are very logical, in which I know a lot of our men have a hard time doing that heart connection thing and being in their emotions and expressing their emotions. But until you can connect to the heart, evolution and back to love is going to be hard. Not impossible, but hard because you got to get out of the mind. And that's true. I agree. Because yeah. I believe fear attacks in our mind and in our hearts. So if our heart was hurt, broken, whatever, one time we close it off and uh, nobody's getting in there. Now everything's a game. Everything's a mind game. Everything is, oh no, this is strategy. This is logical. This is going to be a mind game. And then you will never, ever, ever experience love in every situation. Right? So I personally intentionally try in every transaction to stay in love and to bring my heart to this to the situation the transaction whatever it is whatever i'm doing and that way i don't miss the opportunity to give love and to receive love so that i can stay in connection with the source and that is a brilliant approach yeah commendable yeah but i haven't always been there but the other part that I have realized is that it takes an intense work on self. Very intense. A journey. Sometimes years. Healing. I mean, even going back to childhood and unlearning. So that's why I was also wondering if, you know, some, some of the fear-based uh, emotions, like we talked about anxiety, depression, jealousy, envy, is is there a link to healing too? Big time. Yeah. You know, cause something you talked about earlier. So it's like a broken heart takes longer to heal than a broken bone. <laughs> yes. Tell me about so it. So <laughs> we, we go through life through childhood, adulthood, and there are different things that crush people's heart, which yeah. in turn crushes the spirit. Right. So it's like, we have to constantly, find ways to learn how to love through the pain and heal to stay open keep keep coming back keep open and keep your mind keep your heart just open and you know you you know you we see it all the time um and love is also you know getting back to love is also a lot of lessons it is saying hey no more it is saying no more like i can't just keep allowing you to use and abuse me either that's also a lesson in getting to love too right and i think what has to happen is a person has to still remain vulnerable enough to surrender to love yes surrender in is spite in spite is of the word because i think what happens is a lot of people say childhood the father wasn't present or whatever and they feel rejected or, or things of that nature and then they clam up and they don't open up to a father figure or something like that, or male female relationships, or male male female female now in this society we live in. It's like, so within relationships, someone gets a broken heart and they go, Oh, I'll never love again. And they shut down and they, they don't allow themselves to become vulnerable again to surrender to love. So they can't open up to love. So their capacity is limited. So they have. Like they say, is, is your cup half empty or half full, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're not opening up and being vulnerable, you can't love and you can't expand. So therefore, you can only love with your little teacup. And you're trying to fall in love with somebody that has a bucket. Right, exactly. <laughs> you and see you what I'm saying? You can't put and, my bucket in your little teacup. So you can't, exactly. And you can't, your teacup can't expand wide enough to comprehend or right. to love. Mm -hmm at that capacity so therefore it ends up it has a shelf life if you're not willing to grow but it's all and so when it comes to men all right mm -hmm. so studying now is like and I always go back to napoleon hill's book think and grow rich in chapter 11 they do such a brilliant job and it's it's titled sexual transmutation but it talks about really how man doesn't even evolve to these higher spiritual levels until he falls in love with a woman.
because it takes both that masculine and feminine mm-hmm. energy together to really conceptualize the higher the duality. essence of life. Yes, yeah, the duality. So it's like we're somewhat limited. It's like a handicapped person, right? Or mm-hmm. an eagle that's in a cage. You open up the cage, but his wings broken. Mm-hmm. So it's like until the two come together in that understanding, mm-hmm. they both come together in love love of a higher understanding it can't be that love like oh i'm in love with you because you're beautiful or you got a big booty or whatever it's like (laughs) that stuff all has a shelf life it's like time will catch up to everything and it's like if it was based upon that there's always going to be somebody that's more beautiful have a better shape all these things but the mind and spirit is infinite and it's like if you fall in love in that spirit of that of infinite possibilities it constantly grows and renews Mm -hmm. and grows and renews and it goes on forever so if you're seeking knowledge from the cradle to the grave and you come together with somebody else doing the same thing it's like you're constantly renewing and keeping it fresh and you're growing but if it's yeah. based upon simple three so if you sit down next to somebody listening to this podcast and y'all just like the growing has stopped like there's you just it's like it feels like a dead end type relationship um most likely it was based on some conditions conditions right finances yeah sex Mm -hmm. they might do the same drug (laughs) whatever it is it's like those things have Mm -hmm. shelf lives but what's infinite so our relationship should truly be focused because if we're spirits if we're spirits we should our relationship should be truly based on spirit spirit so divine relationships, spiritual relationships, and we should seek that out. So, and what that feels like or looks like is like um, you just are drawn to this person. Their energy, their is like a magnetic draw for some reason, right? And it could be a person that physically you would never date. Exactly. But there's something deeper. That is typically your soul, your spirit saying, hello, I recognize this this other soul over there. Exactly. Matter of fact, your soul will recognize them before your eyes and everything else. That's you feel, true. You could feel energy. That's why you can you hold somebody's hand and feel lightning. And be like, what was that? And I know people think that that does not exist. Um, but I think once you kind of raise your consciousness to a certain level, it exists. Don't they say that in like that, isn't that Ed Sheeran, you ever hear that Ed Sheeran song? Doesn't he say something about a touch of a hand or people fall in love with a touch of a hand or something like what's that? The, what's the song? Uh, <laughs> thinking Out Loud. Yes. Yeah. Think, yeah. Thinking that's exactly it. And see a lot of people who... Or on the path, they like some of these musicians that write the real dope stuff. It's like they are they can vibing on that level, mm-hmm. and they're evolved. And and culturally, you could listen to a lot of the music that's negative. These people have not evolved to the point where the music has substance. Like growing up, eighties, nineties, the music had way more substance. Sixties, beautiful music about love and hope. Yes. Impossibility, and now it's all about your booty and. Yeah, I listen like, to love music people. because it keeps me in love. I'm straight old school love ballads, music of hope, inspiration, things yeah. of that nature. Because it's like your brain. Well, just like we said, it would depending on what you're listening to, it will plant love or fear. That's right. So if you're listening to love music, which I grew up on this stuff. Um, you know, my mom played music early in the morning. You will plant love. But if you listening to guns and this and that, that's nothing but fear. Yeah, so you know. You know, the whole thing about love versus fear though is is no different than positive negative. I just think that people really just need cuz the whole thing is it's like we we talk about Jesus and the devil, God and the devil, things of that nature, right? We, we're just dealing with dualities within nature, right? Dealing with positive and negative. 
like for example, there's there's every now and then on Facebook I post this one post where this Indian chief is talking to his grandchildren and he said to them, he goes, There's two wolves that are fighting inside of me mm-hmm. and they asked him, Grandpa, which one will win? And he says, The one that I feed. That's right. Oh, absolutely. So it's like within the course of your minute, your day, it's like you're you're constantly dealing with positive and negative. So during the course of the day, if you're just neutral and you're out there, society feeds you so much negative BS, mm-hmm. you are going to have a negative day. You're mm-hmm. going to have negative thoughts. So if you have no philosophy in which you live your life on, you don't read, you don't mm-hmm. pay attention to the trends of negativity within society, you're going to have a negative existence, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas if you wake up and you listen to positive music, you listen to positive inspirational videos and things of that nature, podcasts, you read in books of positivity, you read in the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, whatever it is that you're into in positivity, feed that part of it. And what happens is it outweighs the lower animalistic nature within human beings and and your mental spiritual half will tend to rule your day. So, cause like happiness is a, is a choice, right? So the term rich, if you're rich, realizing I create happiness. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it's like you create your own happiness. Mm -hmm. So control your day by listening to positive inspirational things of that nature and let love rule your day instead of fear. Mm -hmm. And and, and, in that loving spirit, you're returning back to source, turn it back to God. Mm. That's good stuff, Russell. I wanted to ask you, we were talking about uh, relationships a second ago, and um, do you believe, so you talked about Eshran's song, um, you know, he mentioned, I think the lyrics was like, you know, just by a touch of a hand or whatever. Is that the Holy Spirit? Is that the third entity? Is that like, what is that? That that can be debatable. I'm talking about people are going to have their philosophy. It it could be whatever you you call it. Like for example, the whole the whole thing is is dealing with energy, right? Well, but so. I don't know if we could just say is whatever you call it. The reason why I'm saying that is because certain things you will not be able to experience unless you're vulnerable you mentioned that earlier right and you're open to it so you get you get where i'm going with that no 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 no. i get it and i think you're on to something too so what what i was going to say is this right so if you ask 100 people what they think god was right some people say a man some people say the wind some people say whatever but it's like and really understand it. I don't think that you could really understand God unless you really understand energy, right? So we talk about spirit or Holy Spirit. It's an energy force, right? Within within each and every one of us, right? We we have a soul, spirit, right? So it's like when we pass on, the body goes cold because that energy light body leaves mm-hmm. leaves this spacesuit. Mm -hmm. and it goes cold but that energy lives on it goes back to source that drop of water goes back Mm -hmm. to the ocean right Mm -hmm. it turns into vapors goes up in the clouds it rains it goes back to the ocean and then it comes back and it recycles Mm -hmm. right so wow that's true so to your point energy cannot be created nor destroyed it just moves change shape or form so we're constantly exchanging energy Mm -hmm. so we could walk into a room and you could feel whether or not an argument had just occurred or there was oh, some real gosh. bad spirits in yep. the room or if it's great spirits, right? Yeah. Because sometimes you could go to a service at a church or to a mosque or a synagogue or whatever and it's like positive vibes, spirits happening in here. Mm-hmm. You could walk in and you could bask in that positive mm-hmm. energy, right? Whereas you could feel the opposite. Whereas people could walk in a room and you could feel it. So I was playing basketball one day at the, at the gym, and in between games, it was with one of the guys that was, he was here working on a film with Rainforest Films. He was one of the stars on there. 
And he was telling me about a party he went to in Hollywood before. And he said, look, man, I ain't no punk, but I'm going to tell you what happened. He goes, Michael Jackson walked into the room and he said his energy was so strong. He said it just lit up the room. And he goes, I felt the presence of like God or something inside wow. just by him being there. He said that there was a guard that was in there that was like six, five, 300 and something pounds. The guy broke down and started crying. Wow. Because Michael Jackson was present. His energy was mm-hmm. that strong. So you God, see that all the time at his concerts. People just right, falling right. out. Right, right. So that's like a spirit, mm-hmm. right? Think about, mm-hmm. you know, you were talking about your your parents' music, right? So it's like, I remember my mom, like, in the kitchen cooking and playing mm-hmm. Al Green or whatever. And it's like, when a certain song came on, they're like, oh, mm-hmm. it's almost like they got the Holy Ghost mm-hmm. through the music. So it's like. I think society, we tend to only, we're very dogmatic when it comes to religion and what spirituality Mm -hmm. and the Holy Ghost is, right? We tend to only think that, oh, it has to be this, and it has to be called Jesus, and it has, you know, it's like, but it comes in so many different shapes, forms, and fashion. So to your account, yes, I agree with what you're saying, is that that spirit is transferable many different ways and Marianne Williamson she mentioned that in her book law of divine compensation like you love is in different forms and you have to just be open to when it hits you because it'll hit you and you're not going to really know what happened love is kind love is charity love is all these things that are positive yeah so any last remarks about love versus fear? Oh, uh, in that book as well, uh, Marianne Williamson, Law of Divine Compensation, she said everything else is an illusion. That, that love is the only thing that exists, that that is it, and everything else is an illusion. That's deep. I agree with that. And and every time I hear that thing about fear, it takes me back to, I remember the trailer to that movie that Will Smith and his son was in. It was like one of those end time type stories. And he was pretty much saying he's, that fear is real. I mean, fear, fear is not real. Fear, fear is an illusion, right? Right. But he said danger is real, but fear is not real. Mm. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So, but there's only two real emotions in the universe: love and fear. Love and fear, and everything else is just a derivative. That's it. So, so how can we? Um, and we're gonna wrap up. How can we stay in love? I think that people have to just, like I said, seek out positive information, positive influences, people, music, movies, uh podcast whatever it is it's like seek out positivity and let positivity rule your day because if you're sitting back watching world star watching people fight and yank people's weaves and stuff out of (laughs) there it's like there is nothing positive coming out of that you might laugh for a minute but deep in the back of your mind you're like am i going to be next so it's like and my thing is share like share love and positive like if it's negative don't share it because what are you putting out into the world what are you really putting out into the world? True. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I could just always feel it. I just feel it up in my chest. Like, that you know, energy. that energy. Yeah, I do. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, Russell. So, um, as always, how can you be reached? I can be reached on Facebook under Russell Bruce, R-U-S-S-E-L-L. Last name's Bruce, B-R-U-C-E. Also, you could follow me on Instagram where I show off my uh, culinary skills. I'm a closet chef, so I go by Closet Chef Russ, or you could pull me up there also under Russell Bruce. Good stuff. It was great having you on the show again, and I'm sure we'll get a lot of feedback again. So I don't know. We'll see. Might have to make you a co-host or something. Thanks for having me. I'd be glad to do it anytime. Just let me know. Yeah. So once again, uh, this was Matters of the Heart and Podcast. I'm your host, Janie Charlo, and we just got finished having an amazing conversation in regards to love versus fear, um, as love being the highest vibration in this universe and that we need to stick to love and try to avoid uh, fear 
and transcend fear and work your way through the fear so that you can get to the other side of the fear. You can't ignore fear. Um, you do have to recognize it, face it, and get to the other side of it because the other side is usually your greater, it's your love, it's, it's where everything else that the divine is waiting to give you, actually. So um, check us out on our next episode. Thank you.